Fiend and I have a game coming up, and I want my table to look the bollocks. Howdy folks, I'm Autumn Witch and welcome to Bleeding Tree Gaming. Now, I want my toy soldiers to do battle in an immersive setting, so let's set up a table that it would be an honour for Warp Fiend's Death Guard to die on. Before we start, can I just ask you to like, share and subscribe and come find us on Facebook. It really helps the channel grow. My next video is a Valhallen Imperial Guard project, so don't miss it. Right, let's see how I put together a gaming table. Okay, so the first consideration is how much space you have. I am fortunate enough to have space for a 6 foot by 4 foot table, which is actually to uh, 3 foot by 4 foot MDF boards laid out on our dining table. The 40k rules have suggested size areas for battles of distant sizes and it is wholly possible to play a small game on a coffee table. There is also the option of using the floor, although many of us are way beyond the days when excessive bending is easy or practical. Our game is going to be 1000 points. Warp Fiend's Death Guard versus My White Scars. To use the whole table would just be impractical, so I am choosing to set out a 4x4 area, which I mark off with my classic whippy sticks. As you can see, I'm using my green foliage mat, although I also have a snowy one. I could set this all out as a forest, and that would look really cool for more fantasy-based games, such as AOS, Old World, Kings of War, etc. If you're looking for a map for yourself, can I suggest a PVC vinyl one like this, rather than a mouse pad one like my snow one? It is far sturdier, storable, and easier to keep clean. Of course, this is 40k, and neither of us ain't no wood elf, so let's make it more 40k. Some starter sets come with smaller gaming mats. Here I have the ones from the 10th Ed starter set and the Kill Team starter box. They are both two-sided, giving you some options. Heck, if you're only playing a small game like 500 points, these smaller mats are about the right size for a whole game and two of them together could host a 1000 point game itself. I just like the bigger space. There are options on ground texture. The mats have the options of a deserty wasteland or city art. Even on a foresty board you could have barren patches as, say, an orc scrapyard in a clearing or an imperial facility. One tip I have here is to not always keep everything square or centralised. Rotate the mats diagonally and place them off centre. It's one of those little things that makes a big visual difference. Nature rarely does right angles, so why should we? As deployment comes in a later step, this is also a good way to make sure no one side or corner has more tactical advantage than the other. Now, we have this strip of table to the side doing nothing. I like to use this as an admin space because even when you're playing, there's always bloody paperwork. I keep the rule books, cards, dice, dice trays, army lists, etc. on here so they're not in the way of the actual playing. It is also advisable to stay hydrated with the most heroic of heroic brews. Also, I'll be keeping my reserve troops here and it provides a handy spot for Warp Fiend to put her casualties when I crush them. Moving on. The first two videos I made for this channel were building and painting forest terrain. The vids may be a little less refined than our more recent offerings, but it's worth a look if you like these pieces and want to see how to do them yourself. 
I made a lot of pieces of different sizes, I will be starting with the big ones. Since I'm going for a clearing vibe, I only really need a couple of the big ones to block line of sight. I'm thinking that this is the grounds of a shrine or cathedral that the Death Guard are coming to poop on. Then the medium and smaller ones get spread out, trying to keep a balance between terrain space. I add my old Shrine of the Aquila and some sci-fi scatter, because in the Imperium of Man, even memorials are industrialised. This is the point where one really needs to think about the actual armies and units that will be played. If you're bringing some big vehicles like a Stomper or Spartan, densely packed terrain is going to make it difficult for them to get around the board. Now you may want to play a game where big stuff is purposefully restricted as a game condition, but for a broadly balanced game, you want to bear this in mind. My army is going to be my white scars, as you can see it is mostly infantry, with a unit of bikers and a storm speeder. Warp Fiend's Death Guard will also be largely infantry, with a few plague drones. Now, White Scars are fast and zoomy, but a bit fragile in comparison, whilst Death Guard are slow and tenacious but more short-ranged. The forest pieces will give Warp Fiend's models cover at a distance to move in closer, whilst there is enough space for me to manoeuvre my dudes around the table. Once that is done, you can go in with some final scatter just for some flavour, or playing the mission theme. Here I am, putting some rocks and lichen around to break up the larger open spaces and create a better transition between the terrain and the mat. This is the point where missions are decided on or randomly generated, whichever you prefer, and deployment is also selected. I have the mission and deployment cards from the Leviathan set here, and this is often chosen at random, which is why it's important that the table be balanced beforehand. Specific missions have specific objective places, or you can take turns to choose them yourself. Here is the point where minor changes to the layout can be made to better fit the mission requirements if you need to do so. So, here is the finished table. I think it has the right balance for an infantry heavy game. I'll leave you with some beauty shots, but I'd just like to ask you to like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I'm Autumn Witch and I'll catch you next time on Bleeding Tree Gaming.